Hi there, everybody. It's Karen Bentley. Thanks so much for finding your way to my channel where we discuss alternatives to recovery from any dependency, any unwanted behavior, any addiction, any substance abuse. What you get here is a new message, a new mindset, and a new solution. Today, we're doing a book review on a very important book. It's called A Course in Miracles. And the reason I'm reviewing it is because it is going to teach you everything you need to know about harmlessness and being at peace with yourself and in our world. Um, when you render yourself harmless, you eliminate a profound amount of anxiety, chronic underlying anxiety from your life. It could be anxiety for any reason. Anxiety because um, you're worried. Anxiety because you're sad. Anxiety because you're angry. Anxiety because the state of conditions in our world today. Um, it could be any reason for anxiety. Anxiety because your, your life isn't working. Um, but once you start uh, b transforming yourself into a harmless being, a lot of that anxiety falls away. It may completely fall away, or at least it will fall away enough that you are able to manage your life in a more functional way. And this is the great benefit of A Course in Miracles. It gives you that inner peace that you need so that you don't need to reach for something to mask your constant anxiety, mask your constant discomfort, mask your constant suffering. So it gets you up out of suffering, into peace, and into being in the world without reliance on a booby prize. So this is A Course in Miracles. I'm sorry it's backwards on your screen. It's um, One day I'll get a real camera. It's A Course in Miracles. It's actually three books in one. There's a what's called a text. It's very long, like 360 some pages. There's a workbook which offers a lesson a day for a year. And there's what's called a manual for teachers. So it's actually three different works, but it's always packaged as one. And um, you can start right away with the lessons, or you can read the text and then do the lessons, or you can do them both at the same time. There's really no rules about how to go about it. Um, I personally came to A Course in Miracles, or, let, or better said, it came to me in 1992, which was 30 years ago. I can hardly believe it. Uh, why did this work come to me? It came to me because I was in great need. I was in pain. I, I was really suffering. My life wasn't working and I didn't know what to do about it. I just, uh, I was at my wit's end. I was bereft and um, I wanted a miracle and there was a miracle in this book's title. And, and that's what I wanted. I wanted divine intervention. I wanted some force to come down here to planet Earth and and make my life better and solve my problems and just make it go away. That's what I wanted. and uh, or, or I wanted Scotty to beam me up. Just, you know, take me away. Uh, that, that, that was really what I was looking for. And, um, you know, I was really sad. And the biggest transformation and the most profound and lasting transformation is that when I was in that state, I was the needy one. I, I was helpless. I needed a miracle. I needed something to make my life better, right? But now I am the miracle worker. I am the source. I am the giver. I am the healer. And that's a monumental change in perspective, a monumental change in mind, and a monumental change in, be, in being in this world. And so it's it's been a profound influence in my life personally, in how I view the world, in how I act in the world, in what I expect of the world, um, and what I see my role as. So uh, if that sounds helpful to you, and the, and the reason I'm bringing it up as a, a book that's useful on the path to recovery is for two reasons. Um, it is, this book has everything I know about harmlessness in it. Everything I share with you, um, every, everything 
that um, it, it is an act or a tool of harmlessness I got from A Course in Miracles. And it is the most complete, it is the most essential um, information on becoming harmless that I have ever read um, on this planet. Uh, and I have read hundreds, I mean hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of spiritual books and self-help books and everything else, and nothing, nothing has uh, brought harmlessness to my awareness like A Course in Miracles. And so, as I said, I will share what I have gleaned with you, but you can give it to yourself, and you can go right to the source yourself by um, reading A Course in Miracles. Um, and so that's really essential. And why does harmlessness work for somebody with um, a, a dependency or a, a problem, a major life problem to solve? Because um, when you start becoming harmless to yourself and to others and to our world, um, you stop being so fearful. You stop scaring yourself. Other people stop being scared of you. I mean, that's that's a big boost. And um, all the anxiety, the chronic tension that you carry around with yourself starts to dissolve. So I don't know why uh, you're, you're personally tense. Maybe you're worried about, um, you know, the state of our world. Maybe you have uh, bad guilt about something. Maybe you have bad anger. Maybe, you know, maybe you've been done wrong. Uh, maybe, uh, it, maybe it's something else. I don't know why you personally have uh, tension and discomfort and suffering in your life. But whatever it is, the path of harmlessness, I promise you, is going to help you to relieve it, to diffuse it, to give you new tools for, for navigating your way through our world, and for not being so uh, constantly upset by everything. That is what harmlessness is going to do for you, and that is why I am recommending this book today. So let me explain a little bit about the mechanics of it. As I already mentioned, it's three books in one, a text, a workbook, and a manual for teachers. And um, and this is most likely the version you're going to get. It is the most edited version. There's four major versions, and in my opinion, it doesn't matter which version you get. Uh, whatever lands in your hands is the right version for you, but this is the one most likely to land in your hands because this is the one that has been the most published. So, you know, if you're bopping around in a, a, a Goodwill store or a bookstore, that's the one you're probably going to see. There's another version. There's, there's three other versions that might land in your hand. This is called the Sparkly Edition because it sparkles or the Sparkle Edition. This one is called the Pearl Edition because there's pearls on the, co the cover for Pearls of Wisdom. And uh, this one is, this big fat one is called the Annotated Edition. And uh, so those are the ones that are our most common versions. And what's different is the editing. Um, as a new person who's reading this work, you will not care about the editing. Uh, this is mostly important to people who are into the course, people who have taken it, and people who are interested in exploring it further. So if you're a new person, I wouldn't worry too much about the variations, but just to know that they exist and they're different due to editing and some terminologies that are used. But they're all going to do the same for you. They are all going to transform you, like me, from, oh, they can take this wretch and make me an unwretch, and they can do the same for you. So it doesn't matter. The, 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 the version doesn't matter. But you do need to know also that... Um, it's, it's controversial for several reasons. The first reason is it's a tremendously long book. So here you go. Uh, it's not beach reading. So you're not going to just, you know, read it in a weekend and get it. It is going to be a very long reading experience. At most, um, if you're a really ambitious person, maybe you can get through a chapter a day, but probably not. Probably three or four pages a day is all, be, all you'll be able to muster. So it's a very long-term immersion into this um, thinking 
and a way of seeing the world and being in the world. And that's really important that you just stick with it for a really long time so that it starts to rub off on you. The other thing that's really important is that when you have to read slowly, you are actually going through a creative process, particularly this book. You know, it's it's uh, not written in, um, you know, easy marketing reading, easy copywriting. You have to actually think about what it's telling you. What do these words mean? And that thinking is an act of creation. And when you are acting in a creative way, you are aligned with creation. And it's a naturally uplifting process. So, in my opinion, because of the aspect of creativity. It's very important, I think, to do it on your own, to go through the exercise of figuring it out on your own. Whether you get every sentence right or not, you are having a creative experience and that creativity is enormously helpful because it is an aligning experience and because it um, enhances your perception. Um, In the end, it doesn't matter if you know what every sentence means perfectly. What matters is that you recognize you have love in your heart and you recognize that others have love in their heart too. That's what's important and that's what's going to come to you. And 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 getting each sentence exactly right, um, maybe that's going to be interesting to you, but if, if you're struggling with that, it's in the end, it's not all that important. In my opinion, this is just my opinion as uh, an interpreter and practitioner. Um, You know, that said, there are um, study groups, um, there are books, there are thought leaders on YouTube. um, And, you know, if you feel that you need uh, someone to coach you through it, that resource will be available to you. But if you can do it on your own, that would be my recommendation. So the first thing is that it's, it's a long process and it's a thought engaging process. Um, and it's intended to be that way. The second thing that's controversial is that this is a channeled work. It was channeled by a woman named Helen Shuckman. Helen was born, I think, 1909. She died in 1981. Um, she was born into a non-practicing, a non-devout Jewish family. Uh, she had uh, a house uh, a housekeeper who was devoutly Christian, however, and she was introduced to Christianity through her and eventually went to Lourdes and had a kind of mystical experience there. And um, she later claimed she was an atheist in later life. Uh, she was a very educated woman. She had a PhD and she worked at uh, as a clinical and research psychologist at the Columbia Presbyterian um, Medical School, Medical University in New York City. So she had a very big job. Um, She had status, she had reputation. And um, one day in 1965, she started having some strange, she thought she was hallucinating experiences, you know, with flashes of light and just, just these strange unsettling experiences. And then one day, Um, She heard this voice in her head, and the voice said, "Um, this is A Course in Miracles. Please take notes. And, um, you know, she she started writing it down because she was asked to, but she was really worried that she was going crazy. And um, this concerned her because she worked in a field where she was counseling and advising people who were were having um, mental difficulties and emotional difficulties. And so she was really worried and she went to her colleague, Bill Thetford, and she, and she shared her secret with him that, you know, she was hearing this voice and she thought she was crazy and uh, what should she do? And her colleague, Bill said, well, you know, take, take notes, do what it says and let's read them and, and, and we'll figure it out together. And which was a tremendously loving thing to do, even though they had had a very contentious uh, relationship prior to that. And so that sort of formed the ritual where she would uh, go home and take notes. And then uh, the next day she would read them to Bill and he would type them up and they would try to figure out what's going on here. And that continued for seven years. Uh, until 1972 when the voice uh, stopped and it took until 1976 for the work to be published. 
Um, during that time, from 1972 to 1976, it was distributed uh, on copier machines and on mimeographs, and this is why there isn't a, uh, a, a strong copyright uh, in effect on this work, because it had been distributed uh, so openly prior to its publication in 1976, um, which I think is just monumentally important, so that it is a work for everybody, that everybody can access and know about and uh, be influenced by. Um, so the, so it's, it's very long, it's not beach reading, it's a channeled work. The channeling was a very different kind of channeling. So in, 19, in the 1970s, a channeled work was really different, new, radical, revolutionary. Now, um, in the 2020s, it's not so new, it's not so radical. Everybody's got, you know, there's lots of channeled works out there, and in fact, Many people now know how to channel. I mean, even I know how to channel, but my channeling is very different from the channeling that Helen Shuckman experienced. Uh, my channeling, I have to put myself into a meditative state, and I have to get, you know, I have to get really relaxed and open, and I usually have to ask a question, and then I have to wait for the answer to come to me, and sometimes it doesn't come right away, and on and on and on. So I, I kind of, because I, I, uh, am not as um, experienced as some people. I kind of have to pull it out of myself sometimes. But Helen's channeling, she it she could turn it on and off. She could stop in the middle of a sentence if something came up that she had to do. And when she was able to go back to her, her channeling, it just picked up right where it left off. It was a clear voice um, that she heard in her mind. And uh, she took it down verbatim. So that was her kind of channeling. And, the, and of course, the next uh, controversial aspect of this work is who is doing the channeling? Who is it? You know, when I started with the course, uh, I didn't start with the lessons because, you know, I wanted a miracle, but I, I didn't want it to be too kooky. You know, I wanted a, a real miracle. Uh, so I started reading the text before I put any of those lessons in my brain. And, you know, I'm reading and I'm reading and I'm like, who's 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 giving me this message? You know, you start being really curious because why? It's a, it's just a wholly loving message. I mean, it's it's so loving that it's not of this earth. It is not of, no earthling could give you this message. It was coming from some other um, source. And uh, as you go along, it becomes very clear that it's Jesus. And I remember the first time I realized that and I was like, oh my God, how? How am I so fortunate to have this message fall in my lap? That's what I, I, I really, I thought it was my great good fortune that I had this amazing work fall into my hands that I could access uh, on my nightstand every night. So it was an, I thought it was an amazing experience. And I didn't doubt for a minute that the source of the channeling was Jesus and Helen didn't doubt for a minute that it was Jesus. And most people who get through A Course in Miracles, who, who've managed to get through it, uh, don't have any doubt that the source is Jesus. And in fact, on the Sparkle, Sparkle or Sparkly Edition, it says Jesus. Um, people refer to themselves sometimes as Course people. Um, a Course in Miracles is also known by its acronym, A-C-I-M, and it's also known just as The Course. Um, so uh, any, of those, any of those terminologies will work uh, on a, a Google search for you, and you'll, you'll find the right uh, information. Um, the next thing that's controversial is that um, Jesus uses Christian terms. So Father sonship, um, Holy Spirit, uh, terms that are familiar to Christians and Jews, uh, but he uses them in different ways. So, for example, um, we are all the Son of God, and there is no gender in A Course in Miracles. Um, if I was talking to a Course person, I might 
call that person brother, whether they were a male gendered person or a female gendered person or any anything in between on that continuum, I might say brother uh, to to students in a, a workshop I'm teaching, I might say sister, just because I don't expect them to recognize that the course is a genderless work. Gender being something we have here on Earth as Earthlings, some, some differentiation that's an earthly uh, differentiation and not a divine one. Uh, but, you know, some people are bothered by that. Um, another differentiation is uh, in, in ideas that um, are taught in Christianity. Oh, darn. Another one is the ideas that are, are taught in Christianity, such as the Last Judgment. You know, uh, if, if you were raised in, in a, a Christian church or even in a, in a Jewish temple, you might think that the Last Judgment is uh, God's review of your life and um, God casts judgment on your earthly performance. But in, in A Course in Miracles, the Last Judgment is a happy occasion because it's it's the last time you judge yourself or another. So that's, you know, I love those reinterpretations and there's many. That's just one to give you a clue. Um, so that is another difference. And um, I really have found it to be a, a something that has stayed with me. It is in my DNA. Um, I, I took the course. I've read the text many times. I tried to take the the lessons more than once, but it just it didn't work for me. I I just wasn't excited about them. But many people will just repeat the lessons over and over. I don't find the need to, although they are still with me. One of the lessons is, I am the light of the world. That is my only function. That is why I'm here. That is often. Um, the starting point for my daily meditation. I might just start the day with that with that thought. It's such a beautiful thought. It, it's such a directive thought. Um, it's just you know if I'm if I'm if I'm distressed over something, I can put that thought in my head, and and think think about that instead of the thing that's troubling me. So um, the course is constantly with me. It will always be with me. It is one of the most profound influences in my life. And um, it can be that way for you too. But as I say, it's not for everyone. Um, if, you, if you're if you not up for reading, uh, non-beach reading, it might not be for you. Uh, and if you're not up for thinking a whole lot, it might not be for you either. But if, if you are, uh, kick it around. See, you can probably get a free copy in your library. You can probably get a cheap copy uh, in Goodwill. You can probably, if you search around on the internet, there are many organizations who offer free copies. I'm disappointed often when I go into bookstores um, that don't have A Course in Miracles on their shelves. I just think it's it's tragedy that they don't. Uh, I used to read hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books, and now uh, I will read selectively books. Mostly I find that the messaging is too watered down for me, uh, that it is... Um, that, that it doesn't have the richness that A Course in Miracles have and that I just don't need it anymore. I mean, I, I feel like I have such a good understanding of uh, what it means to be a harmless, loving being that uh, oftentimes the explanation provided by others falls short for me, but it might not for you. So, uh, But this is the kind of impact, lasting impact it's had on me. Um, I expect that um, I will go to my grave as a course person, um, but mostly I am a follower very independently. I, uh, I, it, w one thing that's radically different from A Course in Miracles from other, um, you know, any, any belief in God is technically a religion, but the, A Course in Miracles is a, 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 a belief without organized religion, shall we say. So there's no church, there's no structure you have to go to, there's no service you have to attend, there's no leader, although there are thought leaders who have emerged, you don't have to follow them to get the course or to take the course or to live the course. You All you need is your inner teacher and your own willingness. But you can access them, they're available if you want them. Um, there's no rituals other than um, a meditation practice. And there is no um, rules that you have to follow. And uh, there's no symbols that are course symbols. There are no um, 
outfits that you have to wear, for lack of a better word. There's no, you know, no garb that is appropriate for a course person. And so it's, it's really quite a formless experience, which I enjoy. Um, and uh, you may too. And it's going to do this magic on you and uh, morph you into this harmless uh, miracle worker. And hey, check it out. You might like it. Come back, come back. I put out a new video every week. This was my review of A Course in Miracles. Bye for now.